There will be spoilers for season 10 of 90 Day Fiancé ahead. If you're a sucker for stories about couples sacrificing everything for their love, fans of 90 Day Fiancé season 10 are certainly curious about who is still together when the tea finally spills in the season final. We've got you covered, so don't worry. There's a lot of stuff in the 90 Day Fiancé realm to eat. The original program centers on couples who have been granted a K-1 visa, which is only granted to U.S. residents' engaged partners. The term the other way refers to precisely what it sounds like, American couples who relocate to the nation of their spouse. When asked what makes the TLC reality TV series 90 Day Fiancé so successful, executive producer Matt Sharp responded to Gold Derby in May 2022, saying, It's about love. Although love is fundamental, I believe we touched on a few other aspects. The first is how very real this show is. Though we were among the first shows to genuinely convey true tales about regular Americans and their love journeys, I still adore The Bachelor and the franchise. This program also explores this encounter with diverse cultures. We were on the love frontier of this brand new era of meeting people anywhere in the world when we started this show in 2014. This is the most diverse show on television, Shark went on to say. I'll take you to task on it. By now, we have featured individuals from 51 countries. Subtitles are available. There are persons among us who are entirely distinct from one another culturally and linguistically. Not only do we aim to tell fresh, engaging stories, but we also want to create distinct stories every time. During the casting process, we assess candidates based on their personalities, histories, and stories. Additionally, the 2023 season commemorates a significant turning point in the history of the program. This is a particularly important milestone season for 90 Day Fiancé. This series has featured vibrant couples from all around the world whose very love stories have enthralled us at every turn since its inception. Howard Lee, president of Discovery Networks and TLC, stated, With over 68 billion hours of 90 Day Fiancé viewed, I know I'm not alone when I say I can't wait to see what this next season holds. The program follows the highs and lows of couples waiting to be granted a K-1 visa, which enables foreign fiancés of U.S. citizens to enter the U.S. and get married in less than 90 days. What is known about the surviving couples is as follows. After making their 90-day fiancé, before the 90-day season 5 debut, Jasmine and Gino are back. After overcoming significant obstacles in the visa application procedure back in Panama, Jasmine ultimately makes it to the U.S. this time. In an interview that was published on October 6, 2023, Gino stated to Parade, It's really fantastic that Jasmine is finally here. This is great because I had to say goodbye every time I traveled to Panama. And that proved to be quite challenging. For both of us, the long-distance relationship is really challenging. It was therefore incredibly amazing that she could visit the United States. However, it's evident that they still have some issues to resolve. Having children is important to Gino, he stated. He declared, I truly would like to have one child of my own. Additionally, it seems to connect to the discussion of marriage in general. However, I'm sure you'll see what transpires right. The previous time we spoke about kids, we weren't in the same place, Jasmine clarified. And not much has changed in that regard. It's still clear that Gino lacks the experience necessary to become a parent. I do, in fact, have two kids. To be honest, I don't think it's important, but he does. Thus, we would still need to make that decision if we chose to get married. However, social media detective at 90 Day Fiance Junkie discovered evidence that Jasmine is still with Gino and is in the U.S. after discovering them in the wild and posting pictures of them to Instagram. Additionally, they continue to follow one another on social media, and she occasionally posts pictures and videos of him. Jasmine is finally moving from Panama to Michigan to start her life in America with Gino, reads their official bio. After Jasmine's stunning proposal, everything appears to be going well for the newly engaged pair. But will their conflicts and worries regarding their sexual lives and families get in the way of their happiness? Rob and Suffy clicked right away when they initially connected on social media. Soon after they first laid eyes on one another, they decided to formally announce their relationship. Rob hails from a lowly background, while Suffy has experienced life's finest pleasures. 
Things don't exactly go as planned for Sophie when she arrives in the U.S. on a K-1 visa to be with Rob, since she discovers that the living conditions she will be sharing with Rob are not at all like the perfect Los Angeles life she had envisaged for herself. In a confessional, Rob stated that he was first drawn to her because he believes appearances count. Looks are important to me. Both appearance and personality are important to me. But appearances also mean a lot to me. People may kiss my ass for being shallow and desiring a pretty girl because I think I'm a good-looking person, but I'm going to be honest," he remarked. I've been hunting for a fine-ass woman and Sophie is the hottest person I've been with," the man said. Although Sophie and Rob haven't discussed their romance in public, the fact that they don't follow one another on Instagram may be a sign that they've called it quits. Rob learned that Sophie is bisexual in the episode that aired on December 10. Rob hasn't said anything at all since I came out to him, and all I can do is sit here in agony, wondering if he's okay with it. Is he interested in staying with me still? The cameras heard Sophie say this. I sincerely hope that his feelings for me haven't changed as a result of this. Rob expressed his confusion about her failure to inform him earlier. I believe that this is something that you ought to have shared with me sooner, possibly two and a half years ago. I've only told you now because I've accepted it now, she clarified. Rob asked, what does that mean for our relationship? To the cameras, Suffy explained, sure, I'd have sex with a lady. Is it time for me to have sex with a woman? No, I'm not getting married to you. After meeting on social media, Suffy and Robert have decided to take their long-distance relationship to the next level, reads their official bio. Suffy is relocating to Los Angeles, California from the UK with the goal of leading a glamorous Hollywood lifestyle. That might be asking too much, though, considering Robert's lowly upbringing. Will money ultimately separate them, or will their love be sufficient? For this couple, there was no swiping or sliding into direct messages. Ashley first met Manuel at a New Year's Eve party in 2010 while studying marine biology in Ecuador for her undergraduate degree. Despite their language barrier, Ashley and Manuel ended up getting engaged because of their instant attraction to one another. The pair called it quits after Ashley's studies were up and it was time for her to return to the United States. Ten years later, life reunited the couple and they renewed their engagement. It appears that Manuel has confirmed he was married to Ashley after being spotted at the 90-day fiancé season 10 celebrations in New York on September 27, 2023, thanks to this Instagram post by at 90 gay the Melon added way. More than 10 years ago, Ashley went to Ecuador to study marine biology and met Manuel at a New Year's Eve party, reads their TLC bio. Ashley returned to the States after graduating from college and the couple's relationship ended. Since then, they have remained in contact and have gradually developed a budding connection. Ashley and Manuel are finally reuniting in America, but how well do they really know one another after all these years apart? Even though we tried our best to investigate this couple, they have been exceedingly discreet about their relationship. They still follow one another on Instagram, so perhaps that's a positive sign. Adventurous, independent Devon from small town Arkansas decided to fly solo to Sydney, Australia, reads their show bio. It was there that she first connected with Nick, a South Korean man living and working in Sydney, via Tinder. After spending three wonderful weeks together in Sydney, Devon decided she could not live without Nick when she got back home. Nick eventually arrived in the United States two long years after they filed for the K-1 visa. Nick discovers that juggling Devon's huge but vociferous family and overcoming cultural barriers in small-town America is not so simple. We believe that this pair is no longer together because she doesn't mention it on her Instagram profile and their couple Instagram account at Real Life Barbiankin, where they posted romantic photos, has been deactivated. In the December 10th episode, Nikki was prepared to end things. Prior to becoming engaged to Nikki, I had a few sexual friends. This is stuff that is physically necessary. Easy. And this is typical. He admitted in a confessional, elaborating on his carefree attitude prior to their engagement. This was heartbreaking to Nikki. We had already gotten together. We had already started conversing. We were already doing trips together for vacations, she remarked. We only talk it about our plans, shot back Justin. Nikki decided that was sufficient and remarked, I don't know if there's a future here, honorable. Nikki and Justin met on a Moldovan dating service 17 years ago. After making the proposal to Nikki, 
Justin obtained a K-1 visa and entered the country. Things took a turn when Nikki concluded that Justin was not quite mature enough. Nikki had been keeping a secret. After their breakup, Justin went back to Moldova. I caused him trauma. When he got home, he spent a very long period feeling down. And that made me feel horrible. I stayed in contact with Justin over the years. Nikki told ET Online, he had to go through things on his own, and I had to go through things on my own. Although Nikki is transgender, Justin didn't embrace her for who she really is until years later. Nearly two decades later, they found each other again and this time, Nikki was clear about what she wanted. As stated in their official bio, Justin and Nikki grew apart after Justin disclosed he couldn't accept Nikki's transsexual identity. They met on a dating site in Moldova. After over 20 years together, the couple is prepared to try love again. Nikki and Justin both have a renewed sense of hope for their future in America. Status. I believe we're still together. It's hard to say if Clayton and Anali are still together, but there may be hints on social media. Although her Instagram account is hidden, he is still following her, so we're not sure if she follows him back. One more encouraging sign. A fortnight prior to the premiere of episode 3, he shared a photo from her native Peru. According to their relationship bio, Anali and Clayton have only been together in person for a few weeks, having met through a language app two years ago. After moving in with Clayton and his mother, Anali found it difficult to pick up English. Anali finds out that Clayton's mother has no intention of moving out very soon. Starcasm was surprised to learn that Sam and Citra were married, albeit with some spoilers. It appears that on September 10, 2023, they got married close to his hometown of Cameron, Missouri. According to court records, the wedding was legally registered two days following the ceremony. Based on our past exploration of Sam and Citra's social media profiles, it appears that they are still together. Citra regularly shares pictures of Sam on her account, and the two of them look adorable together. Since his bio on his private account says, please leave a message for Mr. and Mrs. Wilson, it seems likely that the couple is still together. Two years ago, Sam and Citra connected via a dating app, and during his initial trip to Indonesia to see Citra, he proposed. Sam needs her family's approval and her father's blessing before they can tie the knot. They have less than two weeks before her father returns to Indonesia, so time is not on their side as Citra and her father will travel to the U.S. to meet Sam and obtain the official blessing. After discovering Sam's vile past and background, would Citra's family allow her to commit to him, or will her father drag her back home with him? This love story has a ticking clock.